Hi, I'm Liam from Offroad CC, and today we're going to review the Cube Stereo Hybrid 160 HPC Action Team 625 27.5 Kiox Cubes Enduro E Mountain Bike. So the Stereo Hybrid 160 HPC Action Team is Cube's enduro focused e-bike. As such, it gets 170mm suspension at the front with 160 at the rear. And as suggested by the 27.5 in the name, it rolls on 650B wheels. So it's built around a carbon fibre front end and an alloy rear. And Cube has kitted that front end with high modulus fibres around the head tube and the bottom bracket. And it's said that it adds safety, stiffness and strength. And then the frame gets internal cable routing throughout and a space in the front triangle for a bottle cage. Enabling this bike's clear look is the Bosch powertube battery paired with the Bosch Performance Line CX Generation 4 motor. This situation does away with a small chainring that we got on the previous models in favour of a large more normal sized chainring. That new chainring results in less friction and less noise and that's great because if you were to run out of battery mid-ride that means you only have to push the bike's 24.1 kilos rather than a load of friction. Then this bike gets Bosch's full colour Kiox display and that offers all the information you could ever ask for. It's really easy to use too, thanks to a massive and simple bar remote. As a whole, the drive unit offers up an impressive level of power that's delivered very naturally. It's really well managed and it's really easy to get used to. This bike's 625 watt hour battery is hidden behind a double walled protective cover on the down tube and that's accessed with a push button. That makes things super easy when you want to charge the battery off of the bike. Against last year's bike, this one hasn't had very many changes made, rather than small refinements to make the bike even more capable. First off, the Fox 36 that we saw on the old model has been beefed up to a Fox 38 and that's added a whole load of stiffness to the front end. It's also made the steering incredibly direct thanks to the lack of flex. This fork gets the Fit4 damper rather than the more adjustable grip too. But regardless of that, it's still a really nicely damped fork, which inspires tons of confidence in the front end. And with this bike, you'll need all the confidence you can get, but we'll get onto that later. Another change is the Schwalbe Big Betty rear tire. While the hands down for the last year's model is a solid tyre, the Big Betty offers shed loads of grip over a load of different terrains. It's only on loose climbs where I've broken traction and some wet roots. Everywhere else it's a bit of a monster. It's a tough tyre too because it comes with Schwalbe's super gravity casing and that's a great comfort when we're riding a bike of this weight. One more change is that on this bike we now get Fox's one by dropper lever. While it's not a massive change, it's just nice to have. Then there's a dual cassette rather than an XT. So apart from the new paint job, those are the only changes that we get on the 2021 model. Everything else, we get Shimano XT drivetrain with that Dior cassette and Shimano XT brakes with four pot calipers at both ends. Then this bike rolls on a pair of wheels from Newman in the form of the SL E30s. And at the front, it's wrapped with a Schwalbe Magic Mary with a Super Trail casing and Addict Soft, just like the rear tire. Then there's the Fox Transfer Factory dropper post that we get on here and that offers 150 mm travel. Of course, it is the factory option and it's really hard to complain about. It's smooth, reliable, and it looks great too. Now let's move on to the bike's ride, and it's quite an interesting one here. The cube's geometry is far from what we see as enduro these days. And while it does have a handful of niggles, it's a capable ride. But I think that's more to do with the suspension on offer rather than the bike shape. So this large frame on test gets a 460mm reach, and that's definitely short for a large framed enduro bike. For example, there's a Giant Trance XE, and that gets a 480mm reach, and that's more of a trail bike. Though that short reach can be seen as a bit of a saving grace because it adds agility to the front of the bike. And that's super welcome on a bike of this weight, this much travel. Then that reach is paired with a 65 degree head angle, and while that also isn't out of this world, it's comfortable and capable when the trail gets rough. While conservative, the reach and the head angle are more than usable, but the front end is extremely tall, and that's because of the 122mm head tube that we've got here. And that tall head tube isn't helped by cubes, cable routing, and the stem spaces that's kitted to this bike. On this bike, rather than run the cables either side of the head tube like you would normally get, Cube has opted to run the cables through the head tube and out through the stem. To do this, Cube has kitted the bike with special stem spaces that have gaps in between to allow the cables to slither through. And there's only one spacer here that has holes for the cables to exit. And this one exit spacer looks to be around 15mm tall and it has to be underneath the bars at all times so the cables can come out and this severely limits how low you can get the bars to compensate for that tall front end. Another issue with this, that's a bit more foible really, is that the stem is shaped so you can't use these special cube spaces on top. 
So when you buy the bike and you'd like to lower your stem, you've got to make sure that you'd have some normal spaces on hand. Of course, this whole setup can be changed. You can route the cables through the side of the head tube, you can change the stem and you can change your spaces. So all will be good. And with our test bike set up the way it is, you're left with a very, very tall front end. And that sucks confidence, makes the steering even more twitchy and it makes the bike feel even more conservative in its shape. However, this bike's conservative geometry is backed up by excellent suspension. I've been able to throw myself down questionable sessions with a questionable level of confidence to make it down with surprising composure. And that's thanks in part to the beefy Fox 38. It's stiff enough to hang on to those really janky lines without being pinged off, and its excellent damping becomes truly invaluable. Its rear suspension is noticeably linear, but that's super welcome over the rough stuff because it offers loads of control and a super planted feel. Though heavy riders may have to bug in one or two volume spaces into the rear shock to stop regular bottom outs. So the rear suspension linear setup does result in a bit of wallowing in the corners, and it does dive a bit when it's hammering on the pedals. But that's a trade-off for its planted feel over chunky sections. Onto the bike's climbing, and it's certainly pleasant here, and that's thanks to a 75.5 degree seat tube angle which places right away at a great place over the pedals. However, when the climbs get really steep, you'll have to push that saddle forwards a little bit to weight the front properly. So at this price point, there's a fair bit of competition and it's particularly strong from other direct-to-consumer brands. First off, there's the Canyon Torque on 9, and that'll set you back £6,000. But for that money, you get a Fox Factory 38 with a Grip 2 damper, a Fox Factory X2, and a Shimano Steps EP8 motor. Already, the kit is looking better for the cash on the Canyon Torque on 9, but its geometry is where it really ups its game. It gets a 485mm reach with a 63.5 degree head tube angle, but its head tube is slightly taller at 125mm. And then from YT Industries is the Decoy Core 3, and that set you back £5,800. That gets a Fox 38 Performance Elite with a Fox Float X Performance Elite, then a Shimano E7000 motor. So the decoy gets an even shorter reach at 449mm on large frame, then there's a 645 degree head angle, but the head tube is shorter at 105mm. So the cube definitely isn't bad value for money, but when compared to Canyons and YT's offering, it's more middle of the road. Though this bike will appeal more to people who are looking for a shorter bike with a lot of travel. If you're looking for a full fat enduro e-mountain bike with capacity to cover a lot of ground and take on chunky trails, the Cube Stereo Hybrid 160 HBC Action Team 625 27.5 may be the bike for you. Though if you prefer a low front end, you'll first have to deal with all the cable routing and all the stem spaces on this bike before lowering that stem or you may have to look at a different bike altogether. So that is a review of the Cube Stereo Hybrid 160 HPC Action Team 625 27.5 Kiox. If you'd like to see more content just like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you've managed to wrangle a Cube, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you very much for watching.